Gary YouTube. We're back in for of our Origins Bonanza blowout coverage, and we are at the CGE area, and we are about to learn about their upcoming space game, tentatively titled Pulsar 2849. That is uh, subject to change, though. But we have Paul right here, and he's going to tell us all about it. So what is this game? Uh, so this is, yeah, currently Pulsar 2849, but the name has changed three times in the last month, so who knows what we're going to end up with. And what you see here is a complete prototype of, of the new game. Uh, it's the new game by Vladisuki, who's done Shipyard, Prodigals Club, Last World, League of Six, and those games. Um, the main mechanics of the game is dice drafting, but the theme of the game is set in an area of space which contains these mineral-rich pulsars. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be claiming those pulsars by putting these bits of cardboard around them, um, and then building mining stations and upgrading them into factories, which will produce victory points for you at the end of every round. So the dice drafting is, is the clever part of the game, and what will happen at the start of the round is that you'll roll all of these dice and then players in player order will take one of these dice from here and that will indicate the, uh, the type of action that they are going to perform that round. And then in reverse player order, each player will take a second die. So you will get two dice of which you will be able to perform your two actions. Now that uses a similar dice drafting mechanism from other games, but what makes it a bit different is the placement of this counter, which will be a nicer counter than this one that I made at home. Um, but what happens is, depending on the dice that are rolled, the speed of the game will speed up or slow down. So if you're consistently rolling high numbers, this marker is going to move further along this track each round. And when this marker goes off the end, the game ends. If you're rolling low numbers, then this marker will not move as far. Because high numbers in this game will get you to do more things. Low numbers will not. So the game will speed up and slow down to take that into account. But in addition to that, this median marker will be placed in a certain position, again, depending on the numbers rolled. So if it's placed here, for example, then when you're selecting a dice from here, if you select the dice on this side of the marker, these are really good dice. These will get you to do really good things. But it means because it's on this side of the marker, you're going to lose position on one of these two tracks. So if I decide to take this six, for example, which is awesome, because it's two spaces away from this, I'm going to lose two positions on this initiative track. And that's going to affect turn order for next round. But I've got a six, which is going to allow me to do cool stuff. So it's a difficult balance between choosing the dice that you want to do to be able to perform the action you want to do, but losing position on one of these tracks, or even gaining. So if you were to take this one, this is four spaces away from this, you would gain four positions on one of the tracks. And let's say you wanted the engineering track, you would go up to here. The engineering track gives you engineering cubes, which allow you to do more cool stuff. Once you're actually playing the game, you, as I mentioned, you have two dice. You will then use those dice to do actions. There's a number of different actions that you can do. One of them is you can fly your spaceship through space. If you land on a pulsar, you get to, uh, you get to claim it by putting your circle around it. But if you fly through one of these systems, you get to flip it over and you can uh, speak to the locals on the planet, put a cube on it. The more cubes you have at the end of the game will get you points. If you end your move on a planet, you actually get a, a bonus for spending more time with the, with the population there. Um, I mentioned these, these mining stations. You can take a level one mining station with a one. You can take a level two mining station with a two. You can take a level three mining station with a four. Now, you don't have to build a level one, then a two, then a three. If you had a four, you could go straight in and say, right, I'm going to have a three. But then you would need a six to flip that over and now it actually becomes the proper mining facility and now you will generate three points every round and you'll get a bonus for doing so. Uh, there's alien technology which is here uh, and these alien technology boards they're two-sided and there's actually two of each. So for each of these sections there could be four possible outcomes and to claim a technology you use the dice of the value that's shown there. So on the first round of the game only these are available I could use my six and I could say, right, I'm going to claim this technology here. I put a cube on it. And now for the rest of the game, every time my spaceship moves through or lands on a pulsar, I get three points. So these are going to give you bonus things for the things that you do in the game. Uh, you also have a personal development board, which is here. This works in a similar way to the tech track, but it's, it's just for you. And each player board is, is slightly different. There's some slight differences between each one. And finally, I've saved the best to last, there are these megastructures. Now you can buy these megastructures. This is an easy to build megastructure. You just need one die of five and, and you build it. This one needs to be built in three stages. So it will cost you three actions in total to build this megastructure. 
But what's cool about these is you, if you end up with two mega structures, you can join them together like that, and this will give you a bonus action of value five. Because you can get bonus actions in this game through a variety of, of purposes. And if you were to do that, you go, oh, I've got a bonus action of five. Because a game will normally last about eight rounds. If you only get two actions in each round, you're only going to be doing 16 actions in the whole game. So getting a bonus action is, you know, it's really powerful, it's really useful. And there's a few ways to get, to get bonus actions. The game's two to four players. Uh, it probably takes about 60 to 90 minutes to play. It's not a particularly long game. It's not particularly complex. In the demos that we've been doing this weekend, we've got people going, they've played two or three rounds, we've left them the reference sheet with what all these do, and then they've been, they've been fine, we've been leaving them to it. And so, who's this designed by? So it's Vlad So okay. he's, uh, he's another Czech designer who designed a number of games for us uh, in the past. The last ones that he's done are Last Will and Prodigal's Club, uh, but this is probably more in line with some of his earlier titles, like um, yeah, Shipyard, 20th Century, League of Six, oh, yeah, and those ones. That. Yeah. All right. So, so yes, yeah, this will be out at Essen. All right, out at Essen, tentatively Pulsar 2849. But either way, be sure to uh, stay tuned to CGE to find out exactly what the end name of this is. Looks like a lot of really cool moving parts. Uh, dice placement, very very neat. If you're enjoying this Origins coverage, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube. All right. Cool.